Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this month's installment for the Esri Emergency Management Webinar Series. My name is Ryan Lenklost. I'll be your host today here from Esri. And we're talking about combining two amazing platforms, I think, in the public safety space. One of those, the leader in crisis information management, which is WebEOC, and the leader in geospatial, which is ArcGIS, to really combine those powerful platforms together to support your operations and emergency management. We've got a great series of presenters today. Uh, so I'm excited to have both Patrick and Matt from Javari, uh, a company name that may be new to many of you, uh, but I know that their product, WebUC, is not new to many of you. So I'm excited to have Patrick and Matt here to present a bit about Javari so that you understand uh, who Javari is as a company, uh, but also to give you a, a bit of insight of what's coming next with WebEOC, uh, where they're headed in terms of the product development, and ultimately showing how we can connect these two platforms together to really operationalize the data in many different ways. And to then reinforce that, we're excited to have two, uh, two very strong users in the community, I think that many of you have looked at and probably seen their applications live running on their city websites or the state websites. And that is Eric from the state of Arizona and Sahelia with the county of Miami-Dade in Florida. So they're really gonna be showing you how they are doing it today, right? You're gonna hear from, from WebEOC, you're gonna hear and see examples of real-time operations ongoing with Eric and Sahelia and some of the lessons that they've learned about how they integrated these two systems together and some best practices that you can also take back home and start to really implement inside of your organization as well. And then finally, I'm excited to have Jeff Barani here. Jeff leads our disaster response program as the operations lead. So for many of you that may have uh, interacted with the, the disaster response program here at Ezra, you may have interacted with Jeff previously, um, but we're gonna talk a bit more holistically about uh, the solutions that Esri has for public safety and specifically in emergency management and how those templates that many of you have been exposed to can be used to expose the data inside of WebEOC and the boards that, that many of you manage and use on a daily basis. So Jeff will really kind of wrap it up uh, at the end of today. And so that's our agenda for today is really to, to talk about WebEOC, show it to you in action, and give you some steps to think about going forward in terms of how you might implement these solutions for your organization. So just a bit of housekeeping before we get started today. So all of you have been muted as attendees. So if you do have questions, please use the chat window inside of uh, the GoToWebinar to ask questions of the team. We'll try to field as many of those as we can as always during the webinar today. But know that if you do ask a question and we don't have the chance to get to it directly uh, and reply to you, that we will follow up with you after the webinar today. So please chat those questions as we go. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out on, on any technical issues or ideas that you may have as well. We'd love to kind of field and hear from you as much as we can uh, during the webinar. We are recording today, so this webinar will be posted online after we are done. Uh, you will then get an email following up, so all of you that have registered to attend will get an email with links uh, that we'll show towards the end as kind of next steps you can take to learn more about both ArcGIS and WebEOC, as well as show you some of the live applications that you're gonna see from Eric and Sohilia. You've had links to those applications that you can explore as well and kind of take away uh, with you when you leave. So look for those emails coming out and the recording posted online as soon as we are done uh, with the webinar the next day or so. All right, for context, I'd, I'd like to kind of hear from you as an audience. You know, we do poll questions quite a bit to help us frame the conversation. And I think before we even turn it over to Patrick and Matt from Javari to kind of talk the web, you'll see uh, roadmap. I'd like to just hear from you as users. So help us understand kind of where you are today as either a web EOC user or not. And so that's today's poll question number one is really simple. We just want to know, are you currently using web EOC today for your organization to manage your information around a crisis? So easy, yes or no. So if you take a moment, just interact with the poll directly you see on the screen in front of you, select one of those answers, yes or no. And that'll give us a sense of where, uh, when we start talking about it, how to frame for those of you that may be new to WebEOC and the capabilities, how to frame that. And also for those of you that are using WebEOC, as well as some of the things that may be coming down the road for you. So we'll give just a second for that to finish up. And results, all right, so there we go. So majority of you are using WebEOC, that's great. We're glad that you're here. I hope that you will learn something new today. Uh, you're gonna hear a bit about the, the ArcGIS extension for WebEOC. Uh, which will be the next question we're going to ask here. But I think you'll find a bit of in, insight of their development mindset, where they're headed. So I hope you will take away from that um, new and exciting kind of innovative ways to use WebEOC. And for those of you that are not, right, the 40% or so that are not using WebEOC today, um, know that this is a capability that you have access to. If you have questions about what that looks like or how these two things work, feel free again at the end, you'll see an email address to reach out as well as just use the chat window if you have specific questions as you're learning about 
crisis information management systems or the ways that WebEOC and ArcGIS work, we hope that you'll take away some, some good things there. All right, so I want to focus in for just a minute on for those of you that are using WebEOC, I'd like to ask a second kind of follow-up question is, you know, if you're using WebEOC, are you currently using the ArcGIS extension for WebEOC? And we'll talk more about what that extension is for those of you that aren't using it or are new to WebEOC. But again, if you take a moment to say yes or no, we're using it. Um, and if you're not using WebEOC, if you want to interact just so you feel like you're part of the club, we'd love to have you as well. So feel free to just check the uh, no, we're not using WebEOC at this time. But give us just a second, if you would, tell us if you're using that extension that connects WebEOC boards to feature services and ArcGIS terminology. Let us know where we're at, and that'll help uh, Matt as well as we talk a bit about the product side of WebEOC. So I'll give you just a second more to answer that question, and we'll take a look at the results. All right, so taking a look at results. All right, so not many of you are using it, so those are currently uh, a WebEOC user. That's good for us to know kind of where we're at. So I think as we frame the conversation, I turn it here directly to Patrick and Matt, you know, know that uh, they will give you a bit of insight of what WebEOC is as a product. You're going to hear about the extension and kind of the capabilities of that extension uh, for that. And ultimately, then also how you can start to really geo-enable the boards that are, are within WebEOC and expose those through many different applications that you'll see live. All right, so we'll move back to the poll for just a second, close the poll out, and we'll get back to our slides. And I'd like to just turn it over immediately to, to Patrick and Matt. You know, Patrick is the VP of services, and Matt is the product owner for WebEOC inside of, of Javari. So I'm excited to have both of these gentlemen with us today. I'm going to turn it over to Patrick to kick it off, kind of introduce a bit about Javari, and then they'll take it from here for the day. So Patrick, Matt, thanks a lot, and the floor is yours. Great. Hi, I'm Patrick with uh, Juvari. I got some great news. I mean, that, that poll told me there's a lot of opportunity out there. So uh, even though a majority of the audience are using WebEOC, most are not using the ArcGIS uh, extension. Um, and there's some real opportunity that we're going to highlight today with a couple of our leading edge clients to show what you can do uh, when you combine uh, Esri solution with Juvari solutions and you create a better together solution that really creates um, a awesome overall value for our clients. You know, if Esri is the science of where, I like to think of Juvari as being the process of what? We combine together to create a, an answer of how. So you take our two solutions together and you really help solve problems for our, our joint clients. And I'm convinced there's a lot of opportunity out there as we start to innovate. So take a look at what Arizona and Miami-Dade have done today and use that as food for thought inspiration for what you uh, could possibly do by combining our two joint solutions. But let me just start out with a, a top-level overview. Juvari is, a, is going to be a new name for most of you, and there's a very good reason for that. Um, we're only, um, as a company, a couple months old. However, our heritage goes back 20 years. WebEOC was created by a company called ESI, and many of you that are WebEOC users um, purchased WebEOC from ESI. Well, in 2013, Intermedics acquired ESI and a collection of other emergency management preparedness assets and formed them into a, a, uh, a, a division that in, in 2017 was spun out to form Juvari. Now, Juvari is Latin for to help or to assist, uh, and that captures our ethos. Um, everything we do is organized around um, uh, this domain, the domain of emergency management, the domain of preparedness. And if you'll look to, to the next slide, increasingly we are all about resilience. Now for me, resilience, which is a term that is bandied about a lot in our community, is a little bit ambiguous. But for me, in, in human terms, it's the concept of bouncing forward. So solutions of the past have folks focused on bouncing back. You, know, you react to the hurricane and you get back to, the, uh, to, to where you were. Well, um, you know, what we need to do to really save lives, uh, save resources, to advance our communities is to bounce forward, to learn from each one of those events. And I think we, that all resonates with everyone, the concept of bouncing forward. But for me, it is embodied in the experience of the cities of, say, San Francisco and Tokyo and how they reacted to um, earthquakes in time. You go back 100 years and a small earthquake would have resulted in fires that would have burned Tokyo or San Francisco to the ground. These days, um, that same earthquake that would have been devastating to those cities 
is a non-event. A few dishes get shaken up. Well, why is that? Because those cities learned uh, from each one of those events and made themselves more resilient. They bounced forward. And so by bringing that same concept of resilience to all of our clients through a combination, a better together combination of technologies that includes Esri solution set and Jivari solution set, we have an opportunity to really help you bounce forward. Um, so how is this really done? It's, it's not automatic. There is some work involved. But what glues together Esri's science of where to Juvari's process of what is what we call the ARC GIS uh, extension. It could very well be called the uh, web EOC extension because whether you're starting from the Esri side or starting from the Juvari side, you need a connection point between those two systems. So next up is going to be Matt, our product manager for both the ArcGIS extension and for WebEOC, is going to tell you a little bit about how the ArcGIS extension works. And if you have WebEOC and you have um, ArcGIS, you need to get the ArcGIS extension because it's going to make all this stuff we're talking about work. So go ahead, Matt. Very good. Thanks, Patrick. So just to talk a little bit about the ArcGIS extension. So uh, as Patrick said, it combines the best in GIS mapping with the best in crisis information management, or WebEOC. Um, the ArcGIS extension is an extension to the WebEOC platform, and it, it's an extension of our WebEOC Maps uh, solution. It provides seamless integration between those two products and really um, provides near real-time data sharing between those applications. When I say near real-time, I mean uh, basically every minute this data is synchronized between the application. Um, at that point, designated users in WebEOC can convert any of their boards, which are the forms or uh, workflows in the system, and create, uh, take those and create those as feature services in ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Server. Um, once, that, once those feature services are created, as end users are creating records in the system, those records become simultaneously available in ArcGIS. And at that point and in advance of that, um, the ArcGIS or the GIS side can use that WebEOC data to you know, do all sorts of things. And Arizona and Miami data are going to highlight a couple of ways or a number of ways that they're using this tool today. But really, the possibilities are endless in terms of the ways, the different boards that could be shared and the different uh, things that you could do on the ArcGIS side with that data. So these are just a couple of examples that we want to highlight because you can use that WebEOC data with the ArcGIS online tools applications, dashboards, so if you're using Survey123 or Collector, those can all be leveraged as part of this. Uh, feature services, uh, and one of the best parts is that these feature services can be created and modified by non-technical personnel. So you don't have to uh, be in development or IT. Those folks don't even need to be involved at all. Uh, basically, end users can be empowered to take these uh, you, the boards in WebEOC, create the feature services in ArcGIS, and if those boards change, you can very easily go in and modify that feed um, between the application. Uh, in the past, any sort of integration between these applications was very uh, fragile, and you know any changes on either side would likely break the integration. That's not the case with this very flexible integration that we have between the two products today. Um, just some uh, uh, features I want to highlight as part of this integration. Uh, is the wizard style user interface that provides that easy configuration by the end users. It just walks them through step by step for configuring this. And we're not going to go through step by step in this session, but we've done previous sessions where we've done that. So you can reference those recordings uh, if you want kind of a step by step on how to, how to use the tool. Um, we've also added bi directional data synchronization. So whether you're doing the updates from the ArcGIS side or the WebEOC side, uh, the integration supports doing. Uh, uh, making edits from either side and that data synchronizing between the two applications. We've also over time added different uh, capabilities um, such as the ability to not only send point data over but also the ability to store and push over in between the applications line and polygon data as well. Um, so you have all that all the same abilities to track both lines, points, and polygons between uh, both applications. You also have data filtering that can be done Obviously, you have data filtering capabilities on the ArcGIS side, but in, in, as part of the configuration of, of this tool, you can set filtering parameters so you're only sending the data that makes sense for you to send 
and uh, and 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 that way, you know, again, only the data that makes sense and um, is preferred is what's sent to ArcGIS. You can also have direct links between WebEOC and ArcGIS. You can just with a single click um, go from WebEOC to those maps that you've created, those feature services that have been created. You can track the sizes and sync statistics um, of those feature services from within WebEOC. And there's also detailed logging of the activity of the integration that you can uh, view within WebEOC uh, to, to know that the integration is, happen is, is working and uh, you can see as data is moving between the applications, you can see that happening real time. And this solution is internationalized for our international uh, joint clients. Uh, this slide just demonstrates how uh, you might have a couple of these common examples of wars in WebEOC, uh, whether it be significant events uh, for tracking of situational awareness, as well as resource management and the tracking of missions. On the left, it shows the WebEOC board that uh, are very common uh, out there to, to be used for these purposes, and then how these tools can be used and synchronized with ArcGIS to uh, be created in various maps and dashboards. And again, these are just a couple examples of literally hundreds uh, that are out there today. Now I want to take the opportunity to inter introduce Eric with the State of Arizona Department of Emergency Management and Military Affairs uh, to speak about how they're using these tools and capabilities uh, to help their operations. Over to you, Eric. Thanks, Matt. Good morning, everyone. Name's Eric Shreve, and uh, help, hopefully we'll be able to show you some capabilities about WebEOC to ArcGIS and how we um, are basically using it to augment our program here over at the Emergency Operating Center for the state of Arizona. So I've kind of paint an overview of what we have going on over here. The direction that Arizona Emergency Management received from the governor's office and his executive staff, as well as the adjutant general, was to create an application that captures every real emergency management or emergency related activity in the state into one application. Um, basically, um, anything that you know gets on his radar, look to have it on a visual platform that you see there in the upper left hand corner. Um, so the direction basically that we went with was looking at using the story map solution to kind of break up um, basically the ESF and I ICS functions to basically segment um, ESF1, ESF2, et cetera, down the board. Um, so those tabs kind of acted as that, um, I guess you could say, shell essentially to capture that information. Prior to the WebEOC ArcGIS Online Connector, the mapping capabilities that Javari offered in their platform was a web map with limited customization as far as analytics, symbology, labels, and pop-ups such as arcade expressions. We knew the amount of valuable spatial information that was coming or being entered in WebEOC needed to come over to a mapping platform um, that gave us that capability to see things. Uh, once the integration was implemented at DEMA, we began to process data from WebEOC to RTS Online allowed us to visualize data in a more intuitive web applications such as operations dashboards, story maps, and explore for the mobile solution. The commercial off-the-shelf RTS Online enabled features from WebEOC that were offered um, off basically out of the box that we utilized were event reporting, ICS 214, so uh, power failures, uh, road closures, basically you know that point geometry type um, as well as shelter management and road uh, closure information. So kind of additionally paint the picture on that image you see there on the right, uh, that's our emergency operating center and that is the 2018 National Mass Care Exercise. It basically replicated or simulated a 7.8 earthquake in Southern California and Arizona was acting as the primary state for that mass influx of people coming over. Um, so we knew Basically, you know, WebEOC was going to be our centralized point for data management for the amount of uh, people coming over. The biggest thing we saw was shelter management. Um, so WebEOC already having that capability built in, we saw the capability for the dashboard to be kind of that visualization of where is it located at. Uh, I will say implementing this solution or this tool for our uh, program, it has taken a lot of the burden off the GIS unit as well as situation unit having to populate and manage that information. Um, I've had countless times where you get bombarded by operational personnel wanting to 
basically, you know, where's this location at? Where's, um, you know, where's this address at? Um, it kind of places the ownership back into the operations hands and enables them to start populating the information over. So additionally, go forward one. So just kind of tying in back to the mass care exercise, um, the information you see there on the right, the top uh, image is basically the shelter management system that's already built, the shelter board, excuse me, in Web EOC. Um, and then the information you see on the bottom right is the dashboard. So as soon as a geometry is added or a point location is added, that information then in turn comes over and populates into the dashboard that you see in the bottom right hand corner. Additionally, having this solution, um, it's been a very powerful tool for briefing executive staff and policymakers. Um, you kind of have that sense that instead of giving them a PDF document that's just static as soon as he gets it or out of date, um, you're actually giving them live data, real time data. Um, and then just kind of stepping back, our primary tool that we're using for Blue Sky Day events is the Arizona ESF RSF Ops Dashboard. We're currently using that today to brief the governor on emergency related events as well as his staff down at the office. Just uh, you know, kind of painting the picture of where we're going um, for Arizona Emergency Management. We are in the process of a rebuild. Um, we are almost done. It should be fairly soon. Uh, basically, it gives us the capability of all of the boards. If there's a spatial piece to it, if you know there's a point line polygon piece to it, the new rebuild will have basically all those boards having the capability to cross over into AGOL with that seamless connector. Um, tool. So kind of just there, um, just an example of a couple of the boards we're going to look to have um, having that spatial information. Uh, so an ICS 209, uh, countywide infrastructure, and then resource order desk. Then additionally, the biggest thing that we're getting requests upon here for our agency or organization is having better mobile solutions um, for a lot of work that our personnel or or that are doing is field work essentially. They're not around a, a PC or laptop or tablet. They're more often than not um, having a cell phone in the hand. So having the capability of um, basically giving them more of a mobile friendly solution, as you can see in the bottom left hand corner, um, there's a dashboard that's kind of configured with the WebEOC data built in that's a little more intuitive for a mobile device. Um, that's a big request that we're getting. So that's looking down the road. And then additionally, um, we're looking to bring more spatial data from GIS or ArcGIS that we're currently utilizing, such as damage assessment information and populating that back into WebEOC to have more of a, um, you know, a logical form or logical list format um, table information lookup. Um, additionally, search and rescue information is becoming a big one that we're trying to populate over as well as workforce tracking, um, you know, no, having the ability to see where your, um, basically where your personnel are at of all times. So I'm gonna show a quick demo of just the tool in action. So as you can see here, here is our WebEOC shelter status board. Um, it is version eightified is what we like to call. So, I mean, scrolling up and down, you can see, you know, pretty intuitive. It's, uh, you know, fairly, fairly easy to, to comprehend and visualize. Um, so we're just going to make a quick change here. This is Australia Foothill High School. We're going to change that to open. And then change the metric here or the number. And then click save. That'll take a second to switch over. So you can see it's open there. And then we have a dashboard that this is the same template we use for the National Mass Care Exercise. As you can see, there's you know a wealth of information that actually just changed right there. Um, so this feature uh, went from red to green and it shows open this metric here increased. Um, but you know, having that on an EOC floor. Um, at the State Emergency Operating Center and then having it 
up on a, you know, EOC floor in one of our Western counties, you're able to kind of have that common operating picture to tell, you know, if each EOC manager wants to know how many shelters they have closed, you say, well, look at the dashboard. Information's already populated there. Um, and that kind of goes back to ha- kind of having that real time live data that's always dynamic rather than, you know, the traditional old school paper map or static information. So that's kind of just an overview of, um, you know, how we're utilizing it for the shelter management piece. Um, so kind of hope you guys, you know, get, have a, a take away a lot from that. So um, back to you, Matt. That's all I have. Thanks, Eric. That was great. So next uh, we have Sohalo with the Miami-Dade Office of Emergency Management. And Sohalo is going to speak about all the different ways that, that her office is using uh, this technology to um, really help support their stakeholders for their organization. Go ahead, Sohela. Uh, thank you very much, Matt. Uh, this is Sohela Jabshir with Miami-Dade County. And uh, yes, we've been using this uh, tool for the last at least couple of years, uh, along with the uh, Esri product and the BOC extension. Um, in, uh, in Miami-Dade County, as we know uh, all the data from WebOC boards that are captured through ArcGIS Online Cloud gets updated every minute, and we are using them in several applications. We are taking advantage of all ArcGIS and Esri products. Uh, one of the applications that we're using, which is as a result of Hurricane Irma, is a native iOS and Android mobile app. It's called uh, Ready Miami Dates or Ready MDC. Uh, this application has been used by general public, and uh, the data that's uh, captured from WebOC directly consumed to a mobile app. Uh, we also have several dashboards and ArcGIS online applications that are used uh, by EOC, by partner agencies, and uh, anybody who needs to see uh, the GIS application. Um, also, we are bringing the data into internal database because uh, we need to, to have redundancy, and we need to have several applications internal within our jurisdictions. Um, we, at this point, we have been implementing uh, 18 boards from WebEOC. Um, one of them, the major one, is the evacuation center or shelters. Also, we have local mitigation strategy boards that uh, are used by our, by our partner agency and municipalities. So we do have grocery and drugstore boards. We have point of distribution for ice and water, disaster assistance center, bridge board, hospital board, like the hospital board is used by all the hospitals as they report the status of a hospital post-disaster, road closure, uh, debris management, and so on. So to implement this tool is not difficult at all. All you need to do is you need to have your WebOC API in the system. And then with the same uh, tool, you will need the ArcGIS Online uh, API. And then you connect this together, and you start building your feature services. And then you can always monitor your um, history and synchronization. So uh, to, to move on, I'm going to talk a little more about this mobile app that we're using, which Again, uh, as you open an evacuation center, you want immediately general public to know that evacuation center is open. This evacuation center, as you can see in this slide, is one of the components of everything else we need to let people know uh, before uh, any storm, during or post storm. Uh, I'm going to talk a little about the Esri's product that we are using that consumes this feature layer. Uh, we are using local perspective, in this case, local perspective template, uh, which again, grab your phone GPS and configure your location and immediately after they open a shelter, 
let you know what is the nearby shelter. It gives you the direction to that shelter. It also gives you the, if it is a pet friendly shelter and how many people are at the shelter and what's the capacity. Again, all these data comes directly uh, from WebEOC, which helps us GIS people not to interfere and work, you know, be in between these two systems. Um, the other uh, concept that I was going to talk about is um, great. From WebEOC to ArcGIS Online, it works perfect. And at the same time, we are bringing from ArcGIS Online into our infrastructure system. And again, it is for redundancy and it is for our internal application. So they are batch jobs and their system in place that every 15 minutes grab the data from ArcGIS Online, which was in, uh, populated from WebUC and brings it to our uh, infrastructure to use for other applications. The, um, we are all familiar with all uh, Esri products. Uh, Operation Dashboard is one of the um, most used and uh, user-friendly. We're using the same thing. The evacuation center dashboard will let us know which one is open, which one is standby, which one is full, which one is closed. Again, the capability of WebEOC extension let us choose and filter what is needed for EOC, like we need to know all the evacuation centers, and what is needed to know by the public, because they only need to see the open shelters. So that filtering cap capability led us to uh, use or uh, provide a system that's suitable for everyone. Uh, the other... Um, dashboard that we're using or the other application, which is the web app builder uh, using Esri product, it's called local mitigation strategy. So this is when our partner agencies go to WebEOC, they report all their mitigation projects and their status of it. This application is shared by public because general public wants to know which uh, mitigation project has been completed and what do actually county do with all this uh, grant funded project and how we are implementing it. So this is open for everybody from public to see the status of our projects. Again, using from WebEOC to ArcGIS Online uh, Web App Builder. Uh, the other product that we are using from WebEOC is the Grocery and Drug Store Board. Uh, this board has been configured, again, to uh, ArcGIS Online, uh, local perspective. And the way it works at EOC, post-disaster, all the headquarters of different uh, stores and drug stores, they are calling EOC, ESF 18, and let them know which store is open, which store is closed. Immediately at the web EOC, using the board, we update which stores are open. And then immediately general public can know what is their nearby open store post-disaster, which is very beneficial. And that these are one of the uh, recovery uh, or response that we need to know immediately post-disaster. So the same concept is captured in, uh, in uh, application. Again, with the um, series of product in Esri as Web App Builder, uh, as the operation dashboard, we are capturing the data. As you can see here, another board, which is point of distribution, or pod board, we, we uh, import the information into uh, application that's used at EOC and also applications that are used uh, by uh, operation dashboard to give the status of how many cars has been served, how many people has been uh, served, and the status of all the uh, supplies that they have. Um, I believe that's my last slide. And um, thank you very much. Thank you, Sohela. That was great. It was uh, really great to see all the different ways you're using 
uh, both WebEOC and ArcGIS and, and this integration to really help uh, your stakeholders and your community. Thank you. Yeah, well, so the next one we wanted to talk about here is just uh, some, some more recent news and some, some updates that are coming relative to this uh, integration. So um, one thing I wanted to highlight, and we're not going to be able to spend a lot of time here, but I'm sure we're going to have some other opportunities to share more information about this. Um, but essentially, the ArcGIS extension is being used to power a new information exchange that's being developed uh, between uh, Javari, Esri, and also a third party, the International Association of Fire Chiefs. So we're working together uh, with the IAFC and Esri um, to develop this national uh, network of mutual assistance. And this is going to provide the ability for mutual aid to be uh, used, uh, tracked, as well as requested and responded and deployed and all of those things um, in this nationwide system. So we're really excited to work with uh, the IAFC and ESRI for this very important initiative. And this technology is being used for the facilitation of the data um, between those two applications. And, and really, to be honest, uh, there will likely be some new uh, functionality that we'll be looking at expanding on in the future based on the needs of, of this initiative. So more to come on that, but we just wanted to provide a brief update on that initiative, uh, you know, so everyone had some awareness of that. Relative to uh, feature enhancements that we're looking uh, looking to, uh, you know, we're continue looking to improve, uh, obviously WebEOC and also this this extension. So one of the things we're looking to do is add the ability to synchronize attachments between the applications that's with our 100 or so clients, 100 plus clients that are using this integration. That's been one of the, the top requested features. So that's something that we're looking at uh, doing hopefully around the end of the year. And we're also looking at adding a feature to allow for uh, filtering based on expression. So a common example or use case is the ability to filter by say the number of days. So I only want to I only want to send the, the, the data for the last seven days of records or 31 days of records or, you know, something like that. So that's just an example of two things that we're looking at addressing. But certainly if you're using the integration or if you're, you know, as you're speaking to us, we're, we're always taking your feedback. So definitely share your feedback so that we can uh, look at adding the features that your organization needs to meet your, meet your operational objectives. And I mean, that's our goal on both sides is to allow you to do your jobs uh, a better and, and a more easy way. So certainly let us know if we can look to improve this integration uh, in, in ways that, uh, that might uh, uh, meet those objectives. And uh, finally, we're going to turn this over to Jeff Ronnie with Esri uh, to talk a little bit uh, more about the uh, operations uh, solutions for emergency management and a little bit more about how these solutions can tie into uh, WebEOC using this integration. Over to you, Jeff. Great. Thanks, Matt. And good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, we, we, what we'd like to do now is kind of share with you how this all kind of fits together with the emergency management operations solution that we've talked about. We've talked about this in previous webinars and in May, we've talked about this in, in San Diego at our user conference and, and national security summit and really see this fitting together well with uh, the capabilities provided by, by Juvari through, through WebEOC. So, so just a reminder that from, from an operations perspective, We've seen, you know, through our uh, response to supporting many disasters throughout the, the recent, you know, months and years, as well as, you know, observing the great work of the user community like, like uh, Arizona and Miami-Dade that we have on the, on the webcast today, that there's a common pattern of use from an operations perspective with, with the technology. So basically having, you know, a, a dashboard up in front of your command center to may help and maintain situation awareness, the ability to have tools to quickly understand the potential impact of, a, of an event, the ability to get information into and out of the field quickly with mobile devices, the ability to keep the public up to date with information not only from a situation awareness perspective, but what are some of the resources that may be available to help keep them safe. You know, briefing command staff and elected officials is, is, a really, is really important. And finally, oh, by the way, every once in a while you still need to produce, you know, hard copy maps. So these all represent, you know, solution templates that, that represent our emergency management, you know, operations um, uh, collection here. And really kind of thinking about this today, we can really, you know, 
combine that with the power of, of what WebEOC, you know, provides. So this really kind of pairs well. We can, you know, put the peanut butter with the chocolate, if you will, in terms of these, you know, capabilities. And already from what you saw presented this morning, um, that, that really kind of, you know, plays out. So what Eric showed from the state of Arizona and using story maps to provide a real kind of guided tour of what's going on to help from a briefing perspective along, you know, emergency sim support function, you know, lines or swim lanes to communicate in information. So that was one great example of uh, how these two technologies could be compared together. So Haley showed, you know, example of monitoring, the, you know, evacuations uh, sh shelter status and, and how the shelters are, are filling up and how their you know, people are leaving and being able to have a operations dashboard that, like this on display in your command center to monitor events as they're going on or getting information out to the public, another you know, example that was shared already. And, and so we just kind of wanted to emphasize that these kind of key capabilities are really brought together well and are, are really better together with both technologies. And we'll show here in a sec you know, how you can understand the potential impact and leverage you know, layers there, as well as you know, how can we use um, uh, WebEOC as a part of the damage assessment process and have data that's collected in the field using some of our mobile tools like Survey123 and have that feed back into the, to the system into, into WebEOC. And you'll see that here in a sec. And then finally, you know, given that the way that all of this works is that the, the, the extension provides the data available as feature services, these can be available to you in, in your desktop applications like Pro to go ahead and make maps with and access the data and essentially be a client to the system, just like any of these other, you know, web viewers that are out there. So now let's, let's take a look at a couple of examples of, of these and some additional examples of these. So first, what I wanted to share with you here is looking at things from a briefing perspective. So, you know, here from the state of Maryland, if there's a large rain event or a flooding event that's gone through and, you know, there, there's many counties that are potentially impacted. What we're looking at here is a visual representation of WebEOC boards here on a map. And no Notice that these are polygons here. These are polygon status boards of the various you know, counties throughout the, the state of Maryland. And we can look at things from an activation perspective, also look at you know, power outages, essentially the different uh, uh, fields that are there on the WebEOC boards are now visually represented here on, on the map. So that's one of the really powerful capabilities that's been uh, in the recent releases of, the, of this extension is the ability to visualize these the polygon data here in briefing apps like, here, like this particular story map. And really behind the scenes, what this represents is you know, this particular county status board, infrastructure status board. So you can see we've essentially just mapped out and have the pairing in real time of, you know, whether the EOC has been activated, power outage, et cetera. So we, that, that first example from a briefing perspective allows us to visualize the, the, the data in that way. And we've already kind of seen, you know, the shelter kind of workflow, you know, demonstrated as you come in here and make edits to the, to the um, shelter status, really from the GIS perspective, think about you know, these being your you know, feature layers. I mean, it's a great example from Miami. The 18 layers or boards are now available as, as feature services, essentially within the system that we can bring into the various you know, maps and apps that will get updated in real time and really allow uh, the broader EOC staff to essentially be deputized as GIS data editors for us to help keep information, you know, up to date as, as the events unfold and, and behind the scenes that the data will synchronize behind the two systems so we can um, have live access to all of this, you know, information as, as data changes and in, in, in updates. And now it kind of takes the GIS personnel out of the loop of having to keep this information up to date and automatically kind of provides this as a part of the, the system and then how this you know keeps information uh, updated and flowing and now we can see our shelter status just decreased here as the synchronization you know caught up um, from a, a situation awareness perspective where we want to understand potential impact here to uh, our, our jurisdiction here we can click on a significant event you know here from the from a WebEOC board in this case you know potentially a dam breach and we can see 
what's nearby in this you know impacted area so if we want to look at you know what's nearby within 10 miles of this dam breach for example we can see that there's three other significant events in that area 11 road closures that have been already been set up and this again this is another web eoc board and finally here you know 470 nursing homes are in proximity you know to this this area so you know those web eoc boards become essentially a first class citizen from a gis perspective to allow us to do further impact analysis on the events as as these things unfold and we can leverage these in our, our various apps to provide really kind of mission focused you know applications as 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 to help us you know do our our work and the last example i want to show here is from a damage assessment perspective so what we want to look at here is here's our damage assessment board here here with inside web eoc we've got our damage assessment board that shows you know recent damage assessment from the flooding that we experienced in 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 Maryland and now we can look at pairing that with a, a our our uh our damages or excuse me an operations dashboard that shows that same information so this is just a different visualization of that same data coming from the web eoc board and really now what i can do is then take advantage of the esri mobile tools here like survey one two three so i can use some of the, the the mobile tools on my smartphone on my tablets on my you know windows surface you know now um and to go out in the field and collect that information so i can you know you know basically leverage the information from the, the from the map be able to you know adjust my location or you know if i'm not standing right in front of the the property that i'm that i'm surveying and start here to fill out a couple of the uh, information from the from the form And essentially, this essentially replaces our paper workflow process to be able to do that survey from the field and you know, fill out this information here you know, really quickly. And now if I have connectivity, uh, I can go ahead and send this you know, update and that will get sent not only to the ArcGIS Online you know, feature service to, to get updated, but this will also make its way back to the Web EOC board without me having to do any additional uh, work. So this, I just you know, want to you know, share with you a couple of the kind of key capabilities that we talk about in, as a part of the emergency management operations offering and how this pairs really well with integrating with with web eoc to really extend uh these 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 capabilities and really put the what with the where to really kind of give you the how from a from a response perspective so with that i will turn it back over to uh to, to ryan to answer any questions and and, and lead us towards uh, closing out here awesome so Thanks everyone, Jeff, for, for sharing that with us. I think we'll say collectively to the team here that just presented, you know, thank you guys for that. You know, Patrick and Matt for the partnership of WebEOC, right? And the integration work that you've done to allow those boards to be exposed into feature services. And then, you know, to Eric and Sahelia who have really been out there driving forward on helping us understand how, you know, to really operationalize this, right? Beyond even just saying that we can potentially do it, actually doing it and, and giving us feedback. And so we do have a number of questions that have come in right around that whole kind of life cycle we just described, both on the Esri front for some of the applications and questions, as well as uh, for Web EOC on the product side. And so I've got a couple of those teed up here. So we've got about 12 minutes left. I'd like to just kind of facilitate a bit of the, the Q&A here on the side. And so I've, I'm going to start with Sahili, if you're with us. Um, yeah, one here. of the questions <laughs> that came in, you know, I thought would be perfect for you. And I think they actually referenced your applications, right? You actually showed you know, multiple applications, you just have kind of a local uh, flavor. When I use my location, right, I find the nearest shelter. But you're also using that feature service, right, the data coming from the board and Web EOC inside of the, the department, right? So you have internal private applications with additional attribution and, and stuff to help make better decisions. And you're also exposing some of that externally to the public. So could you talk a little bit about that? And since you mentioned some of the synchronization, uh, that you're doing in the filtering to allow that to occur but speak a bit about how you're using that same feature service both internally and externally to expose data to different stakeholders if you could uh yeah definitely uh so as we publish the feature service into the cloud we have the chance to filter and and it comes with the uh with the extension so that filter help us to provide information to the public, which they need to see open shelters only. At the same time, we can have another feature layer that is providing information about all the shelters. That feature layer that 
has been published without a filter and it's all shelter gets directly synchronized into our uh, internal databases and and that's the beauty of it you because of the way you be used grouping and security using ArcGIS online you can control that you can control your public layer by filtering only the open one and you can provide the internal layer which gets synchronized into our STE system but uh, turning that filter off or not having that filter so that is a great cap capability sometimes you just want to show only pet friendly shelters or what shelters are at that at capacity this is the tool that comes with the feature service with the extension that we can use to filter as it's needed Excellent. Thanks, Mahoney. And I think just a follow-on to maybe that idea. So you've got some filtering, right? You have multiple applications, and you actually referenced how you're also doing some backup, right? Meaning you've got scripts and batch jobs that run to kind of synchronize things that are running in that environment you just described between ArcGIS Align and WebLC. Also with your enterprise geo database kind of behind the firewall. So can you talk a bit about how you ensure that that data is synchronizing between your kind of enterprise geo database and that feature service as well as WebLC? You've got a lot of moving parts and the scripting seems to be working, so maybe just how you you monitor and ensure that that uh, synchronization is happening uh, for disaster recovery. Right, so this is this is the, uh, this is the bad job that has been developed, and it does uh, check with the global ID that is within uh, WebEOC. Also, we configure that ID into SCE, and so it does grab it, the data, as a CSV, and then it compare the changes based on the date and create the uh, feature layer uh, internally or feature data set. So uh, that, that that job uh, automatically runs every 15 minutes. So we can, you know, we activate it every 15 minutes during disaster and uh, we have all the Python codes to configure and to update the feature layer and uh, the hosted feature layer and the um, SDE uh, data set and feature layer. Okay, excellent, thanks. And then maybe to Eric, so the question that came in for you, I think a lot of people were impressed by your dashboard, right? And I think the, the mantra you said was you, you had a challenge right, laid out in front of you of how do you take, you know, this data and visualize it in a way, right? Kind of get stakeholders and in your case, right, executives, the governor involved in visualizing that information and making better decisions. But a question came in and said, how do you also then handle kind of the hard copy map production? I'm sure there's some transition there of some paper processes and even, you know, the ability to print those maps on demand as well as kind of serving that kind of vision that the stakeholders have at the executive level. So how do you handle in your case, producing hard copy maps with that visualization through dashboards and story maps? Yeah, uh, Jeff kind of, you know, he highlighted it a little bit, but definitely, you know, you're going to have your, your audience that still needs the traditional hard copy map, especially when you're out in the field. Um, so, you know, through WebEOC, I like to just kind of create that that circle of, you know, WebEOC to ArcGIS Online and then ArcGIS Online back to desktop, pulling feature services in. Um, you can create, you know, those hard copy 11 by 17, you know, 24,000 K or a grid index essentially that you can hand out to your uh, to your you know personnel when they're out doing you know things such as damage assessment. So kind of having that workflow built in where you can bring in data from WebEOC into desktop, um, it you know it definitely speeds up the process rather than traditionally you know export the data and then bring the data in as a you know as a feature class and then you know there's so many workarounds. Having that workflow already built in definitely speeds up the process. Yeah, I think so. I think you're speaking to, I think it's the real time nature. I think Sahil, you also highlighted that and Jeff even as well. I think all of you collectively kind of highlighting this idea that, you know, data is constantly changing, right? Especially in a rapid, you know, evolving incident. And so the fact that you can have those connections directly from WebUOC, right? That system of record that's getting maintained into a feature service, you get exposed into apps as well as consuming them for print on demand. It's pretty impressive. So thanks for kind of sharing that with us. Um, Matt, if, if you're with us, a question on the, the technical side that came in, there's kind of two things, I think, from a, a web EOC component. So one of the questions that we're, we're seeing and that came in a few times was kind of the integration components beyond just the, the feature service connection, but are there ability to do single sign-on kind of between web EOC and ArcGIS Online? Can you speak to that and maybe the, 
the power of kind of what WebUOC provides from an authentication standpoint and collectively into WebUOC in an ArcGIS Align instance. Sure. When you configure the integration, you determine the users where this data is going to be shared to. So we start at the lowest level where when you create these feature services, it's being shared with a user in, in ArcGIS, and then that user can then, then expand access to that data to you know groups, to the public, look to whoever it, it, they need to. So that's how data is, is shared today with the integration kind of out of the box. Um, but then there's certainly, I mean, basically WebEOC itself uh, supports SAML uh, single sign-on or Active Directory single sign-on. So if you're using that and then you also have, act, you know, single sign-on uh, uh, with Esri, then, uh, you know, kind of directly, then it should allow for you know users to just log in their you know uh, desktop and and use either of the applications without any sort of you know authentication. Does that answer the question? Yeah, does it that, does. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, I think that's perfect. I think that you know SAML authentication. I think for both of us, so in Esri world that works as well. So I think you hit it square on, right? If, make sure both of those are enabled, and that single sign-on should pass through right between them from a from a name user perspective. I appreciate that. Um, but another question that came up, and I think you hit on it a little bit of, you know, the user side. But in your case, in WebEOC, we see a lot of times, that, especially at state level, that there's multiple organizations that are working on a single instance of WebEOC, right, or a single implementation of WebEOC. So in the, to play it out, maybe multiple cities and counties that are, you know, sharing data collectively and using WebEOC to coordinate all their activity. Um, so can you speak about how that might work in the terms of this feature service and maybe group sharing inside of ArcGIS Online? Any thoughts about that a bit to guide people? Yeah, sure. And then this question has come up a, a few times uh, from, from clients in that situation. And again, where you have, uh, from what I'm hearing, uh, multiple organizations under one WebVOC system. So as an example, uh, you know, our headquarters is in Atlanta. Atlanta Fulton County supports a lot of the different cities within their uh, their area on their single WebVOC instance, but they're wanting to share that information out to uh, all those different organizations, which, which might have multiple organizations in ArcGIS. So the way in which that's done today is essentially, uh, I think you, you said it, is, is through the use of groups. So again, it, the data starts with the user, but then that user can expand that information to whether it be groups or the public. So um, so basically, you can feed the information through the, a single org um, because it, today it is limited to a single org. So WebEOC uh, can only be pointed, a single WebEOC instance can only be pointed to a single instance of ArcGIS or a single organization in ArcGIS. But at that point, that, that information can be expand, expanded, the access to that, uh, utilizing the use of groups and the public sharing and, and those different mechanisms. Now, with that said, we are exploring the idea of, of potentially in the future adding the ability to configure multiple orgs uh, or being able to share data more directly with multiple orgs. Uh, but today it is uh, driven by, driven through kind of a single org because um, that's the majority of the cases, that's the way it is, is it's a single org that's supporting that on both ends. Excellent. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Good explanation there. So I guess we've got uh, just a couple of minutes, and I wanted to kind of turn back to uh, Sohail and to Eric for a second here to say, you know, thanks again for for both of you sharing. And I think that you both talked a bit about where you've been, but also where you're headed in some ways. And so I'm wondering if you could just kind of leave us with some of your thoughts before we we close out today, which is that, you know, you've been providing access to information now. Um, and I think that theme really resonated. That you had multiple stakeholders, both public stakeholders and internal stakeholders holders as well. And I'm, I'm curious their reaction to this change, right? A lot of times that's a cultural shift for people to go from, you know, paper to start seeing uh, digital products, for example, and really just getting them to buy into this understanding of kind of real-time information moving um, into their fingertips. And so I'm curious how they reacted to it, uh, any lessons you might have learned for others that are starting this conversation inside of their organization. You know, they may have the technology, but it's more than just the tech, right? There's a process of which you're going. And so if you could share maybe, you know, if uh, Eric, you want to start on that side and then maybe close with uh, Sohelia, it'd be great to get your take or any last minute uh, guidance for those listening. Yeah, so uh, prior to my involvement with the organization, um, you know, the, the standard way of visualizing information was a static, you know, PDF paper map that, you know, by the time the thing was printed, it was basically, you know, the incidents progressed and it's changed. So definitely moving more towards that web GIS, you know, everything's live, having that dynamic real information and 
stream, WebUSC, um, you know, the valuable information that's coming out of WebUSC and bringing crossing that over into the mapping component, um, it's been a powerful, powerful tool for, you know, kind of creating that common operating picture across the, uh, across the enterprise, basically in the state. But at the same time, you know, having that tool is, you know, it's been a, it's been a vocal piece in basically informing and briefing the governor about activities that are going on in the state. Um, because, you know, previously he was getting bombarded by, you know, different state departments giving him, you know, PDF, paper maps, PDF documents, hard copy information that just, you know, wasn't very intuitive. And now having this web application or, you know, the theme that we have here for the dashboard, um, basically, you know, he can just open his iPad middle of the night and look at, you know, ESF4 for firefighting and see that he has a significant fire going on in the state. We've, we've, you know, had a lot of good remarks from himself and the, the governor's staff basically saying this has, you know, improved the, the flow of information quite a bit. Excellent. Thanks, Eric. Uh, so, Eric, how about you? Any last comments there or thoughts on well, that process? The, the only thing I can tell is during IRMA, one of our feature layers actually got more than 1.7 million hits. And to me, that is powerful. It shows that the public are using our apps and the data is coming from system of record. So it, it's been working great for us. Um, I, I'm using the system to the full power because to me the, more import, the most important thing is that live accurate data. And then the rest is using the whole suite of ArcGIS to configure it to, to your customers. Um, to me, that's very powerful. Excellent. Yeah, thanks. Mary. That's an amazing number to hear that, that number of viewers on that. So thanks for sharing. Well, thanks again to our panel and thanks for those that attended today. And uh, Some next steps here, if you're interested, you will get this slide deck. Uh, you'll get the copy of this. You'll get an email from us with a recording as well. But, you know, a couple of links that you'll see here, you'll, you'll be able to go back and reference here. But Thanks to both Eric and Sohei for making some of their applications available. You'll find the URLs, I know they're long on the screen, but you know, take a screenshot of this, and again, you'll get the recording afterwards to see this again, but you know, explore their applications, see how they're doing it. So all of these are public that you can explore and play with today. And if you have questions, ideas, suggestions, anywhere else, my email address is there at the bottom, so rlangclaus at esri.com. Feel free to reach out. You know, We can certainly facilitate conversation uh, after this. And then you know, we'd love to see you back on our next webinar. It'll be the last one for 2018 for our emergency management. That'll be in November. So look for an invitation to come join us again on the next one. And with that, a big thank you again, uh, Patrick, Matt, Eric, Sohelia, Jeff. Thank you guys for spending the time and telling your story. And for all you attending, thanks again. And we look forward to seeing you on the next webinar. Have a good rest of the day.